Okay, well, we'll make a start. Hopefully you've had a chance just to make some Easter cards. If you haven't, take them away and, uh, with you and do them later on, okay, this afternoon. It's really good to see you. If you haven't been to a messy church over the last few months, then you might find it a little bit uh, different, okay, from what we usually do or what you've done in past years. Uh, but this is uh, a new format for these times, and we're still here. Hopefully we can still enjoy this uh, time uh, together. My name is Gary, and this is Annie, and we're going to be leading uh, this morning morning. So does anybody know what is special about today? What, we, what mm. are we celebrating today? It might have even said it on some of your cards. What are we celebrating today? A back table, what do you think? Easter is Easter well today. Done. Happy Easter, everybody. I wonder, have any of you done anything exciting? Has anyone been on an Easter egg hunt? Ada, you have? You did an Ooh, Easter egg really? hunt, wow. well done. Did anybody join us on our Easter trail yesterday? Yeah. I know some of you did. Has anybody already eaten some chocolate today? I have. Oh my goodness. Gary has. Gary's eaten some chocolate. That's very exciting. Very yummy. You have, Isaac. Well, it's great, isn't it, to, ha to have an excuse to eat lots of chocolate and to have some time off school over Easter and also to see a few more people at this time of year. Uh, but have you ever wondered why we actually celebrate Easter? What Easter is really all about? You know, Easter isn't, as nice as it is, all about the chocolates. It's actually about remembering Jesus and what he did uh, thousands of years ago. So we've got some good questions to think about today. I've wondered if you've thought those things. What is Easter all about? And today seems like a really good opportunity to think about that a little bit more. So we're going to look at the whole Bible story. Because even though the Bible is a really thick book, it tells just one story. So we're going to look at the main events of the story today. We're going to look at that together today. Okay, well, there's really only one place to start then, isn't there? And that is right back at the very beginning of the story. Can anyone tell me, or does anyone know, what happened at the very beginning of the world? Anybody got any ideas? Yeah, Ada? It was dark. Okay, great, yeah. Anybody else? What happened at the very beginning of the world? Yes. God created stars. Okay, well, shall we see if you're right in that, okay? Let's have a little look at some pictures on the screen uh, that show us exactly uh, what happened right in the very beginning. You see, God made the world and the universe in lots of different stages, okay? But what did he create first? Well, on day one, we've got a box of lots of different things here. And on day box. one, God made day and night. So I don't know if this torch is very strong, but hopefully you can see that. So he's got day and night. He made light like this torch. And he also made the whole world. Wow. Now, this is a very little version, but he made the whole world in just one day. Isn't that incredible? That is incredible. He didn't hang about, did he? He started off with a, 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 a real uh, bang. And then on the second day, God made uh, the sky and the clouds and the oceans. And that means that he made water separate from the sky. Annie, I thought you were only going to show the people the water. Why did you put the water all That's over me? That's a lot me? more fun, Gary, to throw it on you, isn't oh, it? Oh, right, okay. Well, I'm glad I wore this coat now. I'll take it off. Now some much better. Yeah, God, he created the sky, the sea, and the oceans, and he separated the sky from above from the uh, water uh, below. And God is so creative. On the next day, on day three, God made land amongst all the water, like you can see on the screen. He made loads of different plants and trees, just like this lovely inflatable palm tree behind me here. He made all, so many different kinds of plants, and God made each and every one of them on the third day. And then on day four, as we said, he, he created lots of spaces, didn't he? He'd already made the sky, and so now he began to, to fill that vast expanse that we see above us. And he filled it with all sorts of things, okay? He filled it with a sun, all right? And he also filled it with a moon. And I reckon he also threw in a few planets as well. Uh, we've got Saturn there. And 
He also, as someone said earlier, he created some stars, didn't he? <laughs> wow. Get some of those. And on the fifth day, God created all the flying animals. So we've got a duck here. There you go, Dawn. And we've got, I don't know what this kind of bird is, but we've got another bird. So he created flying birds. And he also created lovely fish like this one to swim in the sea. Wow, how exciting. And he also... Yeah, I've got Earth. God made that on the first day, Emily. He also created lots and lots of other things, okay? Lots of other land animals and people as well. You might find on your table some animals, okay? Animals uh, and maybe some people. Just hold them up for us. Let's see who you've got. got. We've got a rhino over here. We've got an elephant down here. A A giraffe. giraffe over there. What else have we got on our tables? Anybody? A lion over there. Fantastic. A donkey at the back over there. A donkey, a hippo. Maybe you've got some people as well. Okay. On the sixth day, God created every other kind of animal that there is uh, and lives on land. And he also made the very best part of his whole creation, which is people like us, people like you and me. Then on the seventh day, God rested from everything he had made. He not only made everything that you can see around you in the world, but he also made us. Can you all wiggle your fingers? Wiggle your fingers. Can you blink your eyes? What about nod your heads? Nod your heads. All of those body parts, God created all of them. He made all of us in this room. Okay, well, if you have a look up at the screens now, then you're going to see some, some words, okay? Some of them describe God, and some of them really don't describe God. As we've heard, God made the world and everything in it. So what does that mean uh, that he's like? Can you pick out some words that describe our great creator God, okay? Put up your hand if you found a word out of that lot. Some of them don't describe God, but some of them do. What words describe God on that list? Yep. Creative, great. Anything else? What do we reckon? What other words describe God up there? Ellie? Say it a bit louder. Kind, Kind. great. Yep, right at the back. Creative, yep. Anything else? Emily's got one. Emily. Good. Good. Yeah, he's definitely... Lovely, I like your unicorn, Emily. God created unicorns as well. (laughs) So we've got loads of different words. We've got clever and friendly and good and creative and kind and intelligent. They're all words that describe God who made our whole world. But how do you think we should respond to a God like this? If God is good and kind and intelligent, What should we do? How should we respond to him? Well, why don't you talk about that? 20 seconds on your tables. How should we respond to God? 20 seconds to chat about it on your table. Okay, what do you reckon? What should we, how should we respond to a God who is good and kind and clever? Emily, what do you reckon? We should be kind to God and we should be kind to everyone. Alicia, praise him. That's a great one. Well done. Any others? What about listening to him? We should listen to him. Fantastic. I, yeah, I think a God like that, who, who knows all about us, who has made us, who has created us, who knows what's uh, best for us, really deserves our full attention, doesn't he? Uh, we should want to listen to him, as we said. We should want to be kind to him. Uh, we should want to follow him. Uh, we should want to be friends with him and love him. Uh, just like someone who might come up with a brand new invention, who knows everything about it, how, knows how it works and how to make it run. In the same way, God knows exactly what is best for us and what we need. And so we need to, need to listen to him. Well, I wonder, have you spotted a pot of Play-Doh on your tables? Can you hold it up? Hold up your Play-Doh. If we all got one, well done. So... God is very creative, and he made us to be creative as well. So we're going to give you a few minutes to have a go at making something out of Play-Doh, an animal or a person or a plant, anything you like. Have a go at making something out of Play-Doh. Off you go.
Okay, should we have a look at what you've created? Lovely. Is that is that a flower, Naomi? That's a beautiful flower. Wow. Good work. That is what very else good. have we got? Ebony Rose, what have you created? A bird? A, a worm. worm. That's a great worm, Ebony Wiggly Rose. Worm. Well done. Arctic, what did you make? A Good moose. One. Well done, wow. you. <laughs> well done, Alicia. You've made so many great things. Well, we person. are going to... Oh, a person. Good one. That's a great person. Fantastic. Well done, Cameron. We're going to stand and sing a song called Creator God. So you should have some instruments on your tables. Grab your instruments, stand up, and we'll play along to this song. That swim and all the birds that fly were made from your incredible imagination. Creator God, we're singing to the Creator God of all the world. Creator God, we celebrate you. We celebrate you. You spread the ripples through the sea. You painted stripes on every bee And all the grass that grows And all the leaves that fall Part of your amazing plans for this creation Fantastic. Pop your instruments under your chairs. Okay, so everything was uh, pretty perfect in that first chapter, that very first chapter in the Bible. Like all of your Play-Doh creations, I bet you're feeling pretty pleased with them, aren't you? Put up your hand if you like your Play-Doh creation. Yeah, lots of you do. Okay. And God was pretty pleased with everything he had made too. In fact, he said uh, that the people he made were very good. Not just good, but very good. Uh, a little bit like my Play-Doh creation here, I think. <laughs> what is it, Gary? It's meant to be a house. Oh, nice. Very good, very good. But the world great, 
And sadly, things took a turn for the much worse. I don't know if you can have a look at this giant Jenga tower that we have here. Imagine that each of these bricks in this tower represents a different person. All of these people were made to know God and to love him and to be friends with him, just like we are. When we all know and love God, the tower works really well. Like we can see here, it's stable, it's ordered, it's doing what it's supposed to. And everyone is happy. It's working like it's meant to. However, it wasn't long before God had created, after God had created people, that they started to turn away from him. Uh, they didn't want to know him. Uh, what the Bible calls sin crept in. It's basically uh, rejecting God, not loving him, not wanting to be his friends. What do you think will happen if I start taking bricks out of this tower and start doing my own thing and putting them on top? What do you reckon will eventually happen? Shall we see? Oh, well, let's have a look what's going to happen in a second. When people start rejecting God and ignoring him and loving other things more than him, the world starts to fall apart, like this tower will eventually. All of creation fell apart just like that, like these Jenga bricks, because people were meant to know God and not reject him. That's right. People started doing their own thing, and eventually everything uh, collapse just like that. Creation ended up being a complete mess, just like all of these uh, bricks uh, without God. Uh, God made the world, it was ordered and perfect, it all worked well, as we said, uh, when we were friends with Him, and then it falls apart without Him. And this is what we call sin. This is uh, when we stop being friends with God, and the world is all messy because of it. So now, and this might not be something that you like to do. If you would like to, you can have a go at destroying your Play-Doh creation. Squish them all up. And your messed up Play-Doh shows what the world is like now. Not anywhere near as good as it should have been. Squish them all, roll them oh, all together. Oh, no. Oh, dear. All that effort I put into making that. Gary's house is gone. How do you feel about that creation that you made that's now messed up? Anyone willing to tell me? What, how do you feel about your creation now it's all messed up? Sad. sad, yeah, some people are sad. Some people might be a bit frustrated you put all that effort in. Some people might be a little bit disappointed. How do you think then that God felt about his world when that all fell apart? Probably exactly the same, didn't he? Probably quite sad and quite yeah. frustrated. Well, that was the second chapter. We've had creation, and then things took a turn for the worse. But the good news is that the third chapter in our big Bible story is incredible. I can't wait for you to hear this. You see, even though we've been horrible to God, and we ignored him over and over, and we didn't want to be his friend, God wanted to save us. That's right. But, uh, the world was in a whole lot of trouble because it was uh, sinful and messed up, and we all need rescuing. But the question was, the really big question is, who was that person going to be? Who was going to come and save us? I know. Do you? I know. A superhero. I've got some masks here. It must have been a superhero. Superheroes always save the day, don't they? Well, we are going to take in turns putting some masks on, and then we're going to ask you who the superhero is and if you know what their powers are. Because God must have sent a superhero, surely. What could be better than a superhero to save the world? So are you ready? Here is my first mask. Who am I meant to be? Who is this one? Esther? Superman. Does anyone know what Superman's superpower was? Alicia, do you know? He, ha he does fly and he's really strong, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. Superman. Gary. Okay. Who's this one? Anybody? Yes. Kez? Spider-Man. That's right. Spider-Man climbs up walls and things like that, doesn't he? Great stuff. Okay, what about this one? This one might not be quite so obvious, yeah? Wonder Woman. What was Wonder Woman's powers? Does anybody know? Hmm. Uh, Lisa Rose? Say again. Oh, yeah. Ooh, wow. That's a good one. Yeah, good one. Okay, what about this one? Who is this? Oh. Alicia? The Hulk. Do I look like the Hulk? And what can the Hulk do? At the back, what can the Hulk... He, he's really strong, isn't he? That's right, yeah. Okay, what about this one? 
I've got an eye in the middle of my forehead. This might be a whole family of superheroes. Do you know who I'm talking about, Kez? It's mm. not Batman, although it is black. These might not be the right colors, yeah? yeah. The Incredibles, exactly. The Incredibles all had different powers. One of them was really fast. One of them could turn invisible. Exactly. Okay, what about this one? At the back. Iron, Iron Man. Man. What's Iron Man known for? I don't actually know this one, so you're going to have to tell me. Alicia. He can fly. That's pretty good, isn't it? He can, oh, he can, <laughs> he can bend things made out of iron. Of course he can. He's Iron Man. Yes. How silly okay. of me. Here's my last one. Who is this one? Who am I right now? Ada? Batman. What does <laughs> Batman do? Yeah, back table? He flies and he also has a very cool car called the Batmobile. That's right. Okay, well, we've looked at lots and lots of... Lots of powerful superheroes, haven't we? Uh, that had lots and lots of cool powers. But could any one of them actually have saved uh, the world from sin? What do you think? Any of these superheroes, could they have done that? Saved the world from sin? They could bend iron. They could fly, couldn't they? They could defeat enemies, but... No, they couldn't. Not one of those heroes, the Incredibles or Iron Man or Batman or Wonder Woman, none of them could actually defeat sin because they were all sinful themselves and they all had weaknesses like Superman has kryptonite, that could stop him. All the heroes look powerful, they've got cool costumes and cool names and maybe some cool cars, but God sent someone even better than all of those superheroes. Mm. Oh, I don't know. I'm at a bit of a loss to, to know what God sent. Hang on a minute, Annie. I've got a, I've got a box under here. Okay. Maybe this has got something to do with what God sent. I don't know. doesn't seem to be very much in here. Some Christmas trees, some ball balls, a few stars, some lights. Oh, and look, Christmas. there's even a baby. Why is there a baby? Well, I don't know. Well, that's just it. God sent Jesus at Christmas, like we can see here, as a baby to save the world. And Jesus wasn't any old baby. He was God's very own son. What do you reckon? Thumbs up or down? Could he save the world from sin? Could Jesus save the world from sin? He definitely could. He is God and he is perfect. He's the only one who could save us. Well, that's amazing, isn't it? Even though we were horrible to God, even though we turned away from Him and sinned against Him, He still wanted to save us. And He sent His very own Son in the form of a baby, baby Jesus, to do that. Well, we're going to have a go at making our first craft. This is going to come up on the screen as well, but you're going to make um, something that looks like this. So it's a star shape. You've got a baby Jesus in the middle, and it says, God with us. Matthew chapter 1 verse 23 at the bottom and then you should have a little bit of rope to hang it up okay so you've got about five minutes they should be in the bags on your uh, desks you should have one pack per person adults there is enough for you to make one as well if you would like to well done Isaac you've got two <laughs> you made Samuel's too <laughs> Okay, do you want to hold up what you have created? Well done, Alyssa Rose. Well Good done, stuff. back table. Well done, Lisa. Well wow. done, you guys. They look great. Well done, Ellie. Well done, Alicia. Well done, Chris. That's a now great you've just one. got to find somewhere at home where you can hang it, maybe Did on your door <laughs> handle or something like that. <laughs> These look great. Well done. Well, we are going to sing another song now. It's called All About Jesus. There are some actions to follow on the screen, or you can play your instruments. But let's stand up and sing this next song together. Stand up if you can.
like the sun that shines so bright and leads us day by day to the one, the way, the truth, the light. And every time we read, you give us what we need to grow in grace and know you better. Oh, from Genesis to Revelation, it's one story of a great salvation. It's all about Jesus. Oh, it's all about Jesus. Shutting out from every page, it's one here that will save the day. It's all about Jesus. Oh. Well, the story that we've heard so far has been brilliant. So we've had creation, we've had the world going wrong because of sin, and we had Jesus, the hero, come to save the day. I can't wait to find out what happens next in the next chapter, because we're now getting to the Easter story. We know that God sent Jesus to earth to be our savior and to save us, but what did Jesus actually have to do to save us? Did he have to fly or become invisible or did he have super strength? Well, Jesus, he had to deal with that very real problem of sin, which is in all of our, our hearts. Uh, we all turn away from God and there's absolutely nothing that we ourselves can do about it. No amount of being good or going along to church or, or doing nice things for people will stop us from uh, from, from that sin that's, that's in our hearts. Uh, Jesus is the only one who is absolutely perfect, and he is God himself. And so he is the only one who can actually save us. But did you know that we should all really be punished and told off for all the things we've done wrong, for making God sad, for not wanting to be his friend? But something else happened instead. We didn't get punished, but someone else did. Do you know who got punished instead of us? Does anyone know that answer? Alicia, what do you think? Jesus did. He said that he would take the punishment for all of us in our place because he loves us and he wants to save us. That's right. Jesus, he died on that cross instead of us. That should have been us, but Jesus died instead. Can you believe it? That is the most amazing and loving and kindest thing that anyone could do for us. It actually worked a little bit like this. So I wonder if you can see these three cups on the table. I've got this one that says us. Can you all see that one? And at the moment, it's pure and clean because there's no sin in us at the start of the world. And then I've got this one that says Jesus. He is pure and clean because he has no sin. And then I've got this one that says sin. And that is not a nice color, is it? Now, all of us have got sin in us. So if I pour some of this in, you can see that we become a bit unclean and a bit messy like this because we have got sin in us. But when Jesus died on the cross, he was powerful enough and perfect enough that he gave us his cleanness. Can you see? He's making us clean again. Wow. Can you see that? Now, we are not messy and messed up if we come to him and say, Jesus, I need your help. Jesus can make us pure and clean and not sinful anymore. In fact, Jesus is so pure and clean that even if any sin went in him, it doesn't change what he's like. In fact, if we put Jesus, he has enough power to change the sin of the whole world. Can you see that? Wow. Jesus could defeat the sin of the whole world because he is so perfect and he loves us. And we just needed to come to him and say, will you help us, Jesus? That's right. And because sin is gone, we can now be friends with God again and we can be made more pure and clean because of Jesus and what he did uh, there on the cross. Now, now we're now. going to have a go at another craft and it looks like this. Okay, It's a beaded cross. Um, in your packs, you should have a piece of paper that has on one side the colors and what they mean. So the colors need to be in this specific order in this picture because the colors mean different things. And on the other side, if you turn your piece of paper over, it shows you how to thread it. 
The thing that you need to know is the bottom bead, so this first blue bead, you need to start it in the middle of your piece of string. Okay, so you've got enough string on either end. So put your first bead in the middle of your piece of string and then weave the rest through to make your beaded cross. Okay, you've got about five, six, seven minutes to have a go at that one. It was harder than it looked, wasn't it? Yeah. Great stuff. Well done. Okay, well, we have reached our final chapter in the big Bible story. As we just heard, Jesus has been put to death, and all of his friends were really, really sad. But the good news is that they didn't have to stay sad, okay? Uh, now, Annie, are you up for cracking a few eggs? I am. I'm going to put my hard hat on. Oh, right, okay. Taking this come very equipped. seriously. I've Breaking. Got my goggles. Oh, yeah, there we go. Better be safe than sorry. Yeah, going to crack a few eggs. Okay, okay, I'm ready, Gary, I'm ready. Okay, right, okay. Well, let's have a look at this first Easter egg that we have here, okay? I wonder, what do you think is going to be inside this Easter egg? Okay, we'll see if you're right. Someone Look, said nothing. This is a lovely, shiny, Okay, Annie, gold Annie is going to whack it with a hammer, and we're going to find out. Okay, ready, everybody? Here we go. One, two... <coughs> I wow. did it three, Gary, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> Jump the gun on that one. Absolutely nothing. You're exactly right, okay? Now, you might feel a little bit disappointed about that, but it's actually a good thing, isn't it, that it's empty. What else was empty in the Bible story? Can anyone remember? Yes. The tomb was empty too. That's right. That's very good news. The tomb that Jesus had been buried uh, was empty. The body had gone. Uh, it wasn't there because he had come back to life on the third day, and that is absolutely incredible. Jesus' friends, they didn't have to be sad for long because Jesus had come back to life. And we love empty eggs, don't we? Because they remind us that Jesus isn't there in the tomb anymore. He is alive. And he appeared to over 500 people to prove that, okay? Has anyone been doing their Easter countdowns? We made some Easter countdowns. Was it last week or the week before? Emily yeah, did, some of yeah. you have remembered to do them, been sticking your stars on the countdown to Easter. Well, this is the day that that countdown has been leading up to, the day when we celebrate that Jesus came back to life, that even though he died on a cross, in the end he won. When Jesus came back to life, which we call the resurrection, it was the best day in history. But why was it so good? Well, let's take a look at this second egg, okay? We've got a second egg here. This egg looks perfectly normal, doesn't it? Just yes, like the other one. But what's going to be in this egg, do you think? Well, let's give it a go. And he's going to take it out the wrapper. One, two, three, hit it. Ooh. Ooh, what's in there? I nearly hit this chick with my hammer. Little chick. A little chick. Wow, okay, well... Oh, this two chicks. Sorry, I've nearly lost this one. Oh, yeah, pink chick as pink. well. Okay. Well, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? You normally expect to find a chick inside an egg. Uh, and that reminds us, doesn't it, that, that God can give us new life, that we can be free from sin. That's what chicks and, and baby animals speak of at this time of year, new life, doesn't it? Okay, finally, we've got this final egg here. What's going to be inside this particular egg? A celebrations egg. What does it say on the box? It says a hollow milk chocolate egg with eight of your favorite chocolates in miniature. Okay, so we're expecting maybe eight eggs, uh, eight uh, chocolate celebrations in here. Let's find out what's in here. What do you reckon? <gasps> wow! It's Look at that! It's full of celebrations. They're not just one, two, three, four. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Loads and loads of celebrations, far more than we were expecting in the box. And you know, that's just like Easter. Even though uh, we might, might think that Easter's uh, great with chocolate and all lo lots of different things like that, actually, the best surprise is yet to come. Because when Jesus came back to life, he doesn't just give us life here on earth, he gives us eternal life, life in the life to come. Uh, but we need to say sorry and ask for his help. Uh, and that's a wonderful surprise, isn't it? Wasn't it what we were expecting. So we're going to have a go at one more craft to celebrate this 
best day in history. We've got so much to celebrate because of Jesus. So we're going to make a craft that celebrates the fact that the tomb was empty. They found the tomb empty. So as you can see on the screen, you're going to stick, color these in, stick one on the top bit of the peg and one on the bottom bit so that when you open the peg, we see here that the, uh, the tomb is covered. But when we open it, it says Jesus is alive because he was no longer in the tomb. Okay, so have a go at this, your last craft to celebrate the fact that Jesus didn't stay dead. About five minutes. Well done, Devon, that one looks good. So we can, oh, well done, girls at the back, they look great. So we're going to sing one more song now. You might have gotten to know this over recent weeks, it's called Super Saviour, and Gary is going to come up with some actions for this song. So if you want to grab your instruments, stand up, and let's have a go at this song together. Who can save the day, take our sins away? Who can rescue us with mighty power? Super Savior to the rescue, Super Savior mighty to save. Look, look, here comes Jesus, up, up, and out of the grave. Super Savior to the rescue. Super Savior, mighty to save. Look, look, and here comes Jesus, up, up, and out of the grave. He's the death crusher, sin smasher. Who's the mighty Super Savior, Jesus? He's the death crusher, sin smasher. The mighty super savior Jesus One, two, three, out Who can save the day Take our sins away Who can rescue us With mighty power seats, pop your instruments down. So there we have it, the big Bible story leading us all the way up to Easter, which we are celebrating today. We've been on quite a journey all throughout the Bible. God made the world perfectly to know him and love him. We messed it up because of our sin and because we didn't love God. Yet God still wanted to save us by sending Jesus to take away our sin and give us eternal life if we come back to him. That's right. There's lots and lots, isn't there, for us to think about on Easter Day. But the very best thing uh, that we can think about is the fact that Jesus has uh, died, but he has also risen for us on that first Easter. We we have so much to be grateful to him for because he has come to save us if we will accept him as Lord and Saviour. So we've got a few things to just let you know about, but make sure to take your craft home with you. You should have a little Easter chocolate in there as well, and there should be books on your table. If you don't already have those books, take 
those at home with you. If you do already have them, just leave them on your tables. Um, there for you to take home. And just to uh, make you aware of, we have family services like this every single Sunday at 11 a.m. and 3.30. You're very welcome to come along to those. And also, from the beginning of May, we are going to be starting our youth club for kids around this age, again, on Wednesday evenings, okay? So you're welcome to come along to that. I'll be starting again at the beginning of May. Great stuff. And if you're an adult here this morning and you're maybe new to Christianity and you want to explore it a bit further, then we are running an online uh, course called Christianity Explored. You can pick up one of these cards. Uh, they're probably on your table, so pick up those and take them home. Uh, they've got the various details on them. Before we go, let's just pray, shall we? Lord, we do thank you and praise you for this day. We thank you that we can come here together and celebrate what you did for us on that very first Easter. Uh, Lord, we pray that you'd help us to remember these things and help us to, uh, to act on them as well. Uh, be with us for the rest of this day, we pray. Keep us safe as we travel home now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.